so Justin and Jerry got a chance to to sit down um, mm. uh, and interview with Ben, um, who's doing a Kickstarter at the moment with um, some 3D STL files. So let's see how they got on. Hello, folks. I'm joined today by Ben Mowbray and the delightful Justin. Hello. And we're going to be looking at uh, Starship 4 Kickstarter. I believe you're up to now. And this is yeah. for one ship this time, unlike previous Kickstarters where you had fleets of ships. But it's a big one. Um, it's very big. It is very big. So do you want to tell us a bit about the Kickstarter then, Ben? Um, sure. Yeah. Um, like you mentioned, it's my fourth one now. Um, and uh, we had huge success last time uh, doing the three ships. Um, best one ever. And uh, so obviously I got a strong and clear signal that people want ships. And I happened to conduct a backer survey at the end of the last campaign asking everyone pretty much what they wanted to see. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, at first I thought I would do a couple of different ships uh, like I did last time. But this one just got so big I was like, ah, it's going to be insane if I do any more than this. Uh, so uh, I did um, decide to settle on the Chimera. And uh, compared to the largest one, which was the Scout ship before, yeah, uh, which was, I think, 78 centimeters long or just shy of two and a half feet with the struts. You can see it behind me there. That's the Scout ship. Yeah. And uh, next to it, the Chimera, uh, which is three feet or 90.1 centimeters in length uh, as the standard version yeah. because unlike the other ships, I, I found that um, I love designing ships and I have my own aesthetic. Uh, the Scout ship is sort of like based on the amalgama amalgamation of my, um, my influences, which is a lot of uh, 70s and 80s uh, sci-fi, but also Japanese uh, science fiction animes mm -hmm. from the same sort of period. Um, However, I did come into a sort of issue with that, uh, with the, the translation to 3D printable gaming terrain. And that's, you can have, if you want to keep the outside and have it be aesthetically pleasing, uh, you're going to limit the interior space. Yeah. So the Chimera is sort of like, it's, uh, I, I guess, a, a plaster for that issue. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so that you can... Um, it has a lot more interior volume and playable space than the other ships. Yeah, we can see that. We're just scrolling through the Kickstarter at the moment. It has um, a very space truckers feel to it where you've got such a, yeah. a robust looking ship, but at the same time, there's so much play area in there with multiple decks and it all uses um, a locking system. So it's, it's not glued together in sections. You uh, It has... Uh, a, a glue-free uh, solution, that's correct. It uses the open lock system, which is open source. Mm -hmm. uh, many different, uh, all my past terrain uses it, uh, and it's compatible with a number of different types of locks. Um, I will admit that the model you see behind me does have a little bit of glue on it, but that is because we actually have been using anim animation tools to, to make the pitch video. It's very limited only on the base, and uh, it's dissolvable, but it has been designed to fit with clips. And I have uh, actually, as one of the first stretch goals, I did some custom clips, mm -hmm. uh, which feed through a number of different parts to improve the stability on the, the, the bottom of the ship. Uh, I can probably show it later, but yeah. believe it or not, despite the tiny uh, looking landing gear, um, it does actually fully support them. Um, quite pleased with my own engineering, to be honest. Well, you really should be. It's like uh, internal buttressing on the, the miniature, so yeah, the, the clips themselves give rigidity to it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just loving the the whole aesthetic that you have for these ships, Ben, just because it, it really harkens back to those sci-fi shows from whenever I was a kid. And then just yeah. seeing some of the stretch goals you're running here, I love the fact that you're doing like turret ports and stuff onto it as well. Oh, of course. Like, I mean, that the first thing anyone wants when it comes to uh, gaming, it's guns. Um, missiles and weapon systems, uh, that's been noticeable. I did want to make the base ship um, something a little bit more generic because I, I'm trying to think of like reusability, replayability, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, so if you make it like a cargo ship, that's something that you can redress, reset, reuse. Um, and if you want to make it a huge player ship, um, you, you can and it's customizable. 
Now, uh, whenever you're running this out, it's STL files folks are getting, and what sort of printers would you recommend people would run these through? Um, they're being designed for FDM printers, uh, which have seen a phenomenal reduction in price these days, actually. Um, the Ender 3, which is like the, I think it retails around 250 US dollars, um, which is quite an approachable uh, cost. Um, and uh, using PLA plastic, which is pretty pretty cheap and standard. Um, I use uh, Prusas, which are around about 750 to 900 euros, depending if you want to buy the kit or the uh, the the uh, fully assembled version. Uh, personally, I, I try to focus a little bit more on. Um, on the design side of things, but of course I have to print things out. Um, mm -hmm. So I have a love-hate relationship with, with uh, 3D printers, and they do require a little bit of an interest in the hobby. Um, but if this had been a product from, say, Games Workshop or, or someone else, uh, it would assumably cost significantly more than what it would cost to print out yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah it's... And at these scales, uh, you... Uh, the PLA works quite well. Mm -hmm. uh, I've I've done a lot of work with with PLA here in the office. Basically, whenever it came to three D printing, Warren basically passed the the project over to me. So I think I've been running like three AnyCubic i three Megas, uh, an AnyCubic Predator, and a Photon for a while now. So I'm I'm very curious just to to see how these work and how the STL files actually load out onto your build plates and stuff. That's that's where my real fun with the hobby is is just figuring out what's the most efficient way I can run it out on a machine. Right. Well, I I do try to um, basically. Uh, orient the model for optimal printing. I try to make them as support free as possible. Um, so if you're using any, well, even even the slicer technology is getting a lot better these days with uh, supports. Um, I wouldn't recommend printing something of this size on an SLA printer because it's, well, just the resin costs are going to be insane. Um, but you can, Definitely get higher quality if you want to go that way, but but it's primarily FDM, um, with, which uh, melts the plastic uh, rather than using a liquid re resin, which is uh, I think the most cost-effective way to build it out. Yeah, well, I mean, like I've I've been building costumes and stuff for a while, so like even doing prop weapons and stuff, it's just so efficient to run FDM. And honestly, me personally, I would love to get a go at running one of these. I, I'm just looking through your Kickstarter and I'm seeing. You're you're looking to unlock things like side engines and things now, which just really changed the profile of the ship. Yeah, uh, the profile can change quite a bit. Um, it's one of the primary features that's it's designed to be modular, so you can make it smaller if if a almost meter long ship sounds a little bit too large for your table. Um, you can uh, shorten it. You can. Um, ba basically, uh, the, there are parts options that have come out in the stretch goals to make it uh, bigger or smaller. Mm -hmm. um, although bigger, you, you might want to. Well, it should be possible with new parts. Mm. Well, no, we, we we like bigger. Yeah, we do like bigger, don't we, Jerry? Yeah, it's always always good. I suppose if you're playing something where you want to get people in amongst the ship itself. And the fact that you can do this in sections, you could potentially have all three floors or three decks of the ship laid out side by side and, and having people moving up and down. And yeah. imagine games like um, AVP would be particularly amusing in here. Yeah. You see, there's there's a, an episode of Battlestar Galactica, I remember, where they actually landed all the ships on a planet. This is the remake one. All right, yes. And basically they were converting all the ships into like housing and office spaces and things like that. I would love to do a gaming table with these ships and just do that gaming table. Well, you know, we've seen that on Jakku when people were just using things like the Falcon as just a bit of shade in the middle of the desert. So mm -hmm. it's all doable. You have um, the 3D model that you can spin around for us, Ben. Yeah. Uh, so this is the Chimera. You should be able to see it now, I hope. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, she is quite large. Uh, three decks, standard. Uh, the parts are designed, or rather the decks are designed stackable. So I've tried to work with gravity instead of against it mm -hmm. um, so that you can essentially uh, lift off the uh, outer hull. So let's take off the top there and you can 
then see inside uh, the upper deck, which is designed uh, for for sort of living spaces. Yeah. Uh, right now they're quite bare bones, uh, but I guarantee that quite soon there will be additional options uh, for up on the upper deck. Uh, it's got a little bit less space in the stock version because of the uh, slanted ceiling. Um, but then uh, if we go down to the second deck, we have the bridge uh, at the front. Yeah, uh, quite spacious compared to uh, the the scout ship from the last campaign. Um, a little bit of a, a kitchenette and uh, sort of like tactical area, can, and you have you, a very. Hang on, can you just back up and pivot in the kitchen area again? What do I oh, see? Sure. What do I see in the back corner? Is it a little round table? Yeah, it looks familiar. It, huh? it does look very familiar to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I try to be, uh, to use the same design language, uh, yeah. that, 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 uh, we have, uh, been, uh, growing up with, mm. if you're in a, a similar age group to that, I suspect we are all in. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, it's definitely been an inspiration, uh, for that. And in fact, the, uh, primary example of, um, the ship that inspired me for this one is the Gozanti cruiser from, yeah. uh, I think first seen in episode one, but has featured prominently in Clone Wars and Rebels. So there are some influences there. Oh, imitation uh, is the most sincere form of flattery. And, and I think yes. we, we all want to play in those worlds. Yeah. What sort of um, size wise would the things like the walkways and the corridors be if this was printed at the. At yeah, your, your sure. Um, so we can isolate a. Um, single square there here let's see mm -hmm. i can take two of those and let's see it's like so, wizardry <laughs> <laughs> maya skills uh yeah um so yeah this is autodesk maya for anyone who's wondering um this uh particular green object mm -hmm. that i've got highlighted there is essentially uh, an inch by an inch and we're representing roughly the D&D &D scale yeah. of uh, one and a half meters or five feet to a side, essentially. So yeah. approximately 28 millimeters to 30, 32-ish. Yeah. I mean, the scale is going to look slightly off no matter what. You can't – minis aren't perfect in yeah. that way. And you can't account for everybody's collection. But it's it's nice that, you know, a sort of a standard 25 mil round base will walk down those quite neatly. Mm. Yeah, and of well, course, uh, with 3D printing, the beauty of it is if you want a different scale, uh, you could scale these down. Um, it might get a little bit trickier with some of the detail at 15 millimeter, but you can certainly go upwards if you want to turn this into a space hulk or something like that. Um, I was the, just the thinking, that, I would love to play core space in this. Yeah, um, I haven't tested it. I've got my copy in the background there, but I haven't been able to test it yet, but... As soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, I need these minis. I can put them in my spaceships. <laughs> it, it is uh, a very fun game. I just, I imagine having a raid mission for Core Space where you're an invading crew rocking in to steal mm. someone's things, you know, all their shiny, shiny toys. It speaks to me yeah. in the way Firefly does. They are a hunking set of <laughs> engines I see coming up in the rear there as well. <clears throat> oh, yes. Um, we have a almost three deck uh, engineering section. Uh, so you can see the engineering here. There's quite a few shadows. I can turn off the shadows a little bit if you want to see a bit better. Oh, wow. Um, I don't know. I kind of like the moodiness with the, the shadows in there. Oh, I'll, I'll put it back on then. So um, you can just see some of the details. You don't quite get as much as what you get out of a render. Yeah. Uh, but it should give you an idea of the 3D space here. So these engines are quite large and quite heavy. Um, you can see the, these are all clip locks. Um, so there are no actual clips in the in the visualization. Mm. Uh, we can swing it back into the, the cargo bay. You can see they they have these the cargo bay doors. Uh, they actually come uh, in one uh, well three sections. There's one there, a second one there, and a third one there. Yeah. Uh, but they print as one part, so they actually open up so the hinge is built into the model. Oh, so let's pre-articulate it. Um, yeah. Articulate, uh, articulate. It's articulated, yes. Uh, integrated. Uh, I try to cut down on things like that because um, it can be a nuisance. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll be a bit loose when you first print them, but uh, get a coat of paint onto them and it'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. It, it was nice seeing the little tracked um, 
rover, I suppose, lander, uh, rolling uh, out of it? Yes, the rover is actually from uh, the Dragon's Rest. A uh, little shout out to them, uh, fellow cool. Australian, um, making some awesome stuff, Ian, from the Dragon's Rest. Uh, so we had a little bit of cross-promotion there, so you can actually get uh, a few discounts on their stuff as well. Mm -hmm. I think it, it, the stuff he makes is fantastic, uh, and as far as I'm concerned, I just want to see more high-quality yeah. sci-fi stuff out there. So. It's, it's something I'm absolutely loving just because 3D printers are just unlocking the potential to do the perfect gaming tables, our perfect sci-fi worlds. Yeah, for sure. And and honestly, because because of the nature of sci-fi, uh, there aren't the same limitations uh, that there are with, uh, with fantasy where you have a fairly limited... Um, and I think we're starting to see that on the STL scene that, you know, so what we're seeing in the STL scene these days is, uh, I mean, there's a lot of great, great stuff, but in the fantasy scene in particular, uh, I think we're starting to see a little bit of repetition where, uh, you know, it's a similar sort of style uh, is being represented. Um, you can only take the sort of medieval or pseudo uh, medieval um aesthetic so far yeah but uh science fiction on the other end is just so broad because the future is open so you can go star trek you can go mass effect you can go uh, japanese style macros gundam um that there, there are, or, or uh, alien there, there even just with human designs there yeah. are so many aesthetics available mm -hmm. let alone alien yeah so now, important question. So anybody who missed out any of your last Kickstarters, are they able to, to pick up the stuff that was on those uh, in this oh, Kickstarter? Yeah, yeah. Um, this might be the last time we offer absolutely everything. So there is like a collector pledge. And there's also a uh, a, a pledge for collecting all of the, the ships. Um, so they are quite extensive uh, files, like uh, the, the Chimera uh, has over 400 parts fully printed um so so you're getting quite a lot of terrain in those as well that could actually be repurposed as just general um terrain sets but yeah we do have them on offer at various pledge levels and as add-ons so if you're missing something uh, you can get in there and uh, we'll probably also have a reduced cost uh post campaign where you can pick up some of the other items uh, individually on my mini factory at, at a reduced price. So. Cool, very cool. Uh, I am absolutely digging what I'm seeing here. I just I want to lay my hands on some of these files and start playing with them because it just it looks like it's a ton of fun. It's well, the kitchenette is actually freely available right now. There's a link on the uh, Kickstarter page uh, so you can uh, test that out straight away if you want. Otherwise, uh, we can come to an arrangement. Yeah, so. yeah. You, you need to test out the kitchenette. I have games of Jarek that I need to win on that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's been well, fascinating. Well, it's actually to watch the it. wall part, not, not the, uh, oh, the table. Oh, not, not the table. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. Well, in that case, you're going to have to back this then, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we need to eat this month. No, uh, eating's overrated, I've been told. <laughs> Well, Ben, it, it looks like a, a fantastic Kickstarter. It looks like there's tons of stuff that people can be unlocking and having fun with. And just if they're curious about delving into the, the 3D printing hobby, this looks like a great one to have a go with. So yeah, exciting stuff coming from Second Destiny. The um, whole idea of playing across a meter long ship <laughs> in, in multiple sections <laughs> could be an awful lot of fun. I, I think, you know, you were talking core space. I still think AVP is the way to go on that one. Just have one alien in there eating his way through the crew. I don't know. I think laying out all the different levels of that ship and playing a game of core space as like a crew raid could be a lot of fun. You could go. You could go either way. Yeah. Could, um, yeah. That and all the the additional extras that are in this. We need it. We need to fire up the three D printers though for I, that one. Hey, right, so. Warren, if if. If I can get the files, I'm happy to take the time to run it out for you. Wait, wait, about six weeks of printing, do we reckon? Or um, Give me two months. Two months. Just, Eight just, weeks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and how many men? Uh, <laughs> well, no, how many printers is the question. 